um okay so i'm a minute early <laughs> um overly keen so um yes hello good morning everybody i'm just going to give it a moment for some people to kind of come and join us um but yeah welcome to my first wednesday live um and we're going to be doing chain mail today so i'm just going to give it a moment good morning rachel um i'm just gonna just gonna Say, let some people come on in. But good morning, Rachel from Barrow in Furness. Wow, very noisy in my flat today as the councillor replacing the boiler and all of the radiators. But it'll be worth it, won't it? Um, it's nothing worse than you know when it gets cold having broken radiators. Um, it may be noisy in my house very briefly. I'll try to stop them. I do actually have five cat, five dogs with me. Um, you may hear snoring in the background. Uh, snoring in the background is my French bulldog. Um, she likes to sleep in my studio with me and she gets a little bit comfy and snorry. So just ignore that. Um, and I've got four other dogs in the front room. Morning, Janice from Sunny Swansea. Morning from Wiltshire. I'll pop some of these messages up because this is lovely to see. Hi, Carol. Um, so pop some of these messages up. Morning, Janice. Uh, morning from Wiltshire. Um, morning good morning elaine morning uh hi esther oh thank you i'm looking forward to it as well i'm still around i've been here um yeah so it's lovely to see everybody hi lucy oh thank you it's lovely to be here um oh wow so many wow hello from oh, i have to put this one up Hello from Hawaii. Hi, aloha. Is that right? <laughs> um, from uh, Scotland, um, Sunny Watford. Oh, you've got some sun. We don't have um, we don't have sun. We have grey, rainy, miserable kind of weather. But you know, it's fine. Morning from Denmark. I love they have dogs. I've got five. So I've got my French bulldog. As I said, she's asleep in the corner down here, living her best life. I have two Bellington whippets. Um, and then I have two lurches as well. Um, and it's great, but the problem is if one of them starts barking, they all set off on one. So normally the troublemaker is the one that's down here. So we should be okay. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Oh, amazing. Um, oh, well, it's lovely to hear, have everybody here and saying hi. Um, so I will show you the project that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing chain mail. Oh, morning from, oh, from central Scotland. Hot sun at the moment in North Kent. Um, yeah, we just, we don't, we had a smidge of sun yesterday. It's like it's trying, it's really trying, but it's just not happening at the moment. <laughs> there just is. It's, you know, we've had torrential rain. We've got yellow storm warnings, you know? I mean, we're in, we're in May. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Joanne. We're good looking looking forward to some chain mail work it was sunny for the last few hours but it's become overcast in the midlands yeah that's probably come up from us <laughs> we probably sent that up to your way um it's too hot already i can't cope oh lucy i mean I, i'll put my hands up i don't like the heat um and i much prefer spring and autumn to and even winter to summer <laughs> i love the long days i love the light but i hate the heat and when we have those heat waves i just i can't cope with it um and you know i i'm the one that will hide inside i you know my family like let's come out in the garden and somewhere i'm like no <laughs> i just can't i can't cope with it um ah dude yeah wow okay hi natalie how are you i'm from liverpool um i haven't been to liverpool um it's on my bucket list of places to visit though i've been up towards that way so i've been to i've i've been in manchester very briefly like i used to work for a, co a car company and they had um uh branches in manchester so I, i've literally drove through to the to the um to wilmslow and um mackles field um and back out i've been to leeds again very briefly uh, when i went to visit natalia and i've been to huddersfield but that's about as far as i've been <laughs> on with the on with the on heat, Laura. Uh, morning, David. Thank you. I just, I just, mm -mm. Um, we went away last weekend, uh, last weekend, last year, when we were right in that middle of that heat wave summer with two of my, I went away with two of my friends. 
um because I've got a little cottage down in Dalton and they were like come on let's go out for a walk come on let's go out in the sun I was just like I can't I can't I want to stay inside so I'm glad it's not just me <laughs> oh amazing okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through what we're going to be doing today I'm going to put my other camera on it does make me feel a bit like I'm a DJ um but it's just for you to be able to see overhead what I'm doing I'm going to switch this camera on now okay and I'm going to switch me look at this I'm getting all technical um just some of the stuff I was I'm prepping for the actual demo itself but the piece that we're going to be making today is the captured chain mail it's captured inverted round mail um we do call it cir just for for um you know easiness captured inverted round mail the thing about chain mail is it comes up with some amazingly complicated or proper mouthful names um and so a lot of them are abbreviated down so this is technically the cir which is the captured captured inverted round mail um Oh, I'm glad you're looking forward to it. Hi, Mary. Uh, freezing. It was sunny. They were all dull and cold. Uh, but to be fair, that's the story of my life going sunny and dull and cold. Um, OK, so this is the piece that, as I said, we're going to be making. Here's a finished piece just to show you kind of what to expect from the end. Um, it's one of those weaves that once you get started, it's really, really easy. It's just a smidge tricky to get started. Now, there are several ways to start it, and I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. Um, what I want to do, first of all, as well, is to show you where you can find the kits, because I've got so many beautiful kits um, for this and different colorways. Um, I chose this colorway for the sample piece because I just thought it was so pretty. It's like a really lovely sort of... Um, romantic feel to it almost i just think this has got a lovely sort of i, I love i'm a warm tone person so you know, i've just spent the last five minutes moaning about the heat but i love warm colors um so this is a really lovely soft rose gold kind of color jump ring and these really lovely um almost like mink kind of colored pearls in the middle um i just think it really looks lovely the contrast is beautiful um janice um, I'm, I'm going to put this one up, actually, Janice, because this is a good message and I've got a good answer for this one. <laughs> yeah, I've got a good answer. Um, so Janice says, I love chain mail. I'm looking forward to this, though I do have trouble with capturing the beads. So when you do chain mail, there are a lot of variations of weaves. So there is a variation of this where you put the beads in as they are. Um, and that is a tricky, tricky one, um, because, you know, if your beads aren't the right size and then they can move down. But this one is very simply done. And I'm going to be honest with you. We use a crimp. We put it onto a pre strong piece of um, threading material and we literally chain mail around the beads. So it's so super easy. I think it's a really great one to start with because I think it's something that, you know, you, you look and feel like you're doing something, um, you know, it looks like you've done something really complex and, you know, you have effectively, but it's, it's a nice, easy process. Um, so we are going to be putting this onto um, beading, threading material. Um, I want to just show you, I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to show you where you can find the kits um, and the variations that we've got. So let me just make sure I do this right, because this is the first time I'm uh, doing this, but I think I've got it. So fingers crossed this will work. Oh, yes. Look at me getting technical. I'm just going to hide this screen a moment because you don't need that one up. Um, so I'm just going to show you, you know, we've got the video tutorials here. So if you go to totallybeads.co.uk, if you go to that website um, and then you've got Facebook and tutorials. So you can see here um, and then what you've got here are all of the past projects. Um, as well as, oh, I love the name Cora Beaded Chainmail. Um, so I'm going to click onto this. Um, and it should sort of give you the options that we have available, the colorways. So, you know, we've got um, the black. Uh, I do actually have these samples here and I will be making some finished pieces up so you'll be able to see the finished pieces. Um, but we've got the, I'm going to switch back to this one actually. If I close, mm, come on. Sorry, my mouse has just been a little bit like it doesn't want to move. Come on, mouse. Okay, so the mouse is not playing the game. There we go.
Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Now? Why have we lost sound? Uh, can you hear me now? You can hear me now. Maybe it was because I was doing a screen share. Loud and clear. <laughs> Loud and clear. I don't know what happened there. Um, but basically, um, I'm not going to go back into that screen share because I wonder if that's what made it go. Or I wonder if it was because I cut that camera um, and it maybe it was because I cut the camera. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll basically, if you go onto that page, you'll see we've got lots of different versions. Um, you can see them here. I was just about to say you get three packs of jump rings in here. You get your um, beads and you get your clasp as well so that you can finish it off. You've got enough in there that you'll be able to make a bracelet. Um, let me show you what I had left over from the kit I made the sample with. So I was able to make this bracelet. I've got all these beads left plus another clasp plus a bag and a half of jump rings. So again, you could make a beaded section, you could make um, a section just as a necklace. You probably possibly could make a majority of a necklace, I reckon, with this amount. So you've got lots of um, lots of goodies there. So go and check it out. I mean, there are six variations there, and I just I love the color combinations that we've got. So yeah, go ahead and have a little look at that. Oh, you do also get beading thread. Um, I'll just confirm. You get your jump rings, glass pearl beads, you get a toggle clasp, tiger tail, and you get your crimp beads. So everything you need to be able to get this going. So whilst we're doing that, let's have a little look. So what I'm going to be doing is I need to get a few. The thing with chain mail is you do need to have things prepped. So what you need to do is go ahead and put your beads onto your um, tiger tail. Now, I'm just going to cut. Morning, Mina. Morning um i saw someone saying they were from sunny australia a moment ago um oh, i want to see who was from australia sorry <laughs> oh sylvia in south australia saw me years ago on duro maker when the holiday when we were in holidays in the uk oh i still um i still dot about on there every now and again but i'm doing um other things as well now um so what I've done here is I've just popped on a crimp and a crimp cover with a little loop and I'm adding some beads. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a few more beads and then I'll, I'll show you how I add the crimps towards the end. Um, so when you're adding your beads on, you want this to be the length of your bracelet. Um, so if I undo this one, you'll see. Now I did make this one a smidge big. So what I would say is, can you see here that there's a little tiny gap with just chain mail. So I would say make it about. So I made this one to measure so it met here. I would say I would probably make it about um, allow about. If we say that that is probably together an inch and a half. So I'd probably say make it about an inch shorter than you actually want your finished piece to be. So you make your bracelet, if you were making a seven and a half inch bracelet, make this about a six and a half length of um, beads. OK, so a nice, quick, easy way to add these, by the way, onto your um, beading thread. Take your beading thread and literally just put it straight through. I was doing this fine earlier, but obviously now the camera's on me, it's not playing the game. Yeah, this just makes it a little bit easier than taking them all off. You can get quite a good little chunk of them on there. Saves a little bit of time. Okay, now I've probably done that a little bit too long. That was the sound of crimp beads flying. <laughs> so measuring this is going to be way too big. So I'm going to knock this down to about here, so six inches. Okay. And then I'm going to take a crimp bead. I'm going to take it in the matching color. I'm going to pop it onto my tiger tail all the way down. Take my other end of my tiger tail down. I like to go through a couple of beads as well. Six 
I went all the way down to a couple, only sort of about three. So it's bringing it all the way down. Pop in some pliers, like your round nose pliers or even your crimping pliers are fine. Because the worst thing you want is when you pull this and then you sort of pull it too small. So just bringing that down. Now I only want a little loop. I don't want a big loop. I just need to be able to add a jump ring to it. Bring it down to there. I'm using crimping pliers. Now these ones are zero on ones, but they're pretty much the same as with any. So I've just realized I can lift all my comments down here now. Yeah, you do get enough to make, sorry, you do get enough. What color am I currently showing? I am currently showing, bear with me one second and I will have a quick look at the color. I am showing the dull silver. It's almost, it's described as dull silver, but I think of it as like a gunmetally kind of um shade so it's just a, um, a non-shiny silver which is um with the sort of purple colored uh beads uh morning Anne. no it's no problem um how many bags of jump rings are in the kit three um just having a quick look and yeah you've got you've got enough for two bracelets yeah yeah it's the dull dull silver version yeah so Cool. Okay. All right. So we're all good so far. Any questions, just go ahead and ask. Um, I didn't realize, sorry, I had my um, messages up a little bit where I would go and find um, who was from uh, Australia. Yeah. So it's uh, the dull silver version. You have two clasps, you get three packs of jump rings, you get some bead and thread, you get two crimp, uh, some crimps, uh, some, and then you get your glass pearls. There is enough here to make two bracelets, but you could probably possibly make a necklace as well hopefully that uh answers uh please feel free to shout if you need me to show anything again it's not making sense and just you know pop a message up and we'll see what we can do so i'm just gonna show you i'm using crimping pliers now i've popped my crimp bead on and i also said that i've made this about an inch smaller than my finished piece about inch inch and a half so i'm looking for a seven and a half inch bracelet and this I've stopped the beads at six inches so that's going to allow for a few jump rings either side and my clasp so I've popped my wire through my bead and thread through and what I'm going to do now is I'm using my uh, crimp pliers you see we've got this little v section just here what I'm going to do is just use that straight put my crimp bead straight into that little section and simply crunch that's going to give me a v i don't know if you can see that you should just about be able to see that see how it's going to a v then i'm going to use the sort of you see here we've got like our little tube sections i'm simply going to pop that in at an angle and just sort of just roll that and that will put that into a nice little tube shape for me okay that just gives you a nice looking finish i just feel it looks a little bit nicer than having a flattened crimp bead so you have that there um and then i'm just going to snip this uh tail of the thread away now make sure you don't cut the wrong piece i say that because i do it all the time now this is optional if you want to put a crimp cover on or not um i will just quickly do it because i've done it on the other end uh, but you don't need it to be on there Popping my crimp cover on. I tell you what, Lucy, it really does make life so much easier. Like I said, there's um, a few different variations. Uh, you could use Wire Guardians if you wanted to, Linda. Yeah, I can see why not. But what you want is you don't want it to be too obvious. Basically, by having beaded thread, you don't see the connection. Let me explain what I mean by that. So that beaded thread. Is just can you see if I angle it correctly? It's attached to one of those jump rings, but you can't see that, so it's not really obvious what you've done. But if you put a, a guardian on, you might it might just show the connection a little bit more, um, a bit more obvious. That's all. But you know, I always encourage try it. I mean, what's the worst that happens if you don't like it? You just take it off and redo it. Um, oops, I just lost a bean. I just lost my crimp uh like the easy life um yeah uh i'm just gonna pop this on here 
and we can just get this onto here. Okay, so I just pop it on. And what I do is I just give it a little squeeze just to kind of lock it into place. And then I just gently work my way around it just to pop that into place. So there we have our, sec our little bead section ready to go. This is very important. And I say this because I never do it. Make sure you remember to tie your beads so that they don't fly everywhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, you have to do a bit of prep, as I said. So that's prep stage one. The next thing with this one is that you will need, apart from three jump rings, all of your jump rings to be open. Okay, so I do recommend this to be something that, um, no problem, Linda. Um, so I do recommend this to be something that you, you you just take your time and have it prepped and ready to go. Um, if you're looking at this now, you can see here, these are how the jump rings come. Now, sometimes they will come like this, but are kind of classed as opened. Can you see we've got it's not straight. So it's fine if you're going to be opening all your jump rings anyway. But if you do want some that are going to be closed, just take that second to just close it back up properly. So I'll do that again. So to close it, make sure you've got a good closed join. Now, this is something that you'll do a lot when you're working with jump rings and chain mail is holding it with my pliers, coming in with my second pair of pliers, and I'm just kind of wiggling it so it's now nice and aligned, okay? Now, I'm gonna just talk very quickly about tools whilst I'm doing this. So as I said, I've got three that I want to be closed. One, two, three, and they'll go over there with that. And whilst we're just um, opening a few jump rings, I'll just talk about what I'm using and why I'm using them. So what I'm doing is you'll see here that I've got two pairs of pliers. I'm also using what we call a jump ring opener on my finger. Now, these are really cool, nifty little tools. And they just make your life so much easier. I just tend to wear mine on the top of my um, index finger on my left hand. Now, I am right handed. So I just find this the easiest way for me. Um, and I'm just simply placing my jump ring into the groove and just bending my finger. Just opens that jump ring and I'm just popping them into a little pot, as you can see there. Okay, let's talk about pliers very quickly while I'm just doing this. Pliers that you use, you do need two pairs of pliers for chain mail. Um, there's no getting around it, I'm afraid. Now, you don't need to have posh fancy pliers. But what I would recommend is if you enjoy doing chain mail and you intend on doing quite a bit of it, find some pliers that work for you uh, <laughs> and your naps. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, find the, play, the pliers that work best for you. And what by that I mean is I use the Zeron uh, 45 degree bent nose pliers and I also use the Zeron... Um, chisel nose pliers um, now there are so many different variations of pliers and you can just use two pairs of chain nose pliers uh, and you can just use a pair of flat nose pliers as long as they are flat they will be fine so you obviously don't use round nose pliers or even sort of d pliers for this you need them to be chain nose uh, or snipe nose however you call them um, or flat nose pliers Variations of those are fine, but that's what you do need. Now, I also have a way of holding my pliers. So I will always hold my bent angle pliers in my right hand. And I always use the short chisel pliers in my left because I find that works best for me. Um, you know, as I said, it doesn't matter if you haven't got the same pliers as me, as long as you've just got some pliers that um, that will you'll be able to open the um, jump rings with. So I've got a little pile here and I will need to open some more up. This won't be enough for me to do the whole piece, but it will be enough for me to be able to get it going and showing you how it works. Um, the other thing I was going to say about this is we've got it as a bracelet, but it would also make a really lovely key ring, I think, or, you know, or a bookmark. So imagine if you had like a key ring, 
just did a section like that and then put a charm or a cluster something or even a bag charm i think it would look quite cool as well so you know it has got a lot of options right so i'm just doing a couple more of these and then we're going to get started with the actual technique itself but as i said when you're doing chain mail you really do need to have um you, you know you have to take that time out at the beginning to have all your jump rings open and ready now a lot of weaves have it where you might need so many open so many closed as i said apart from a couple at the beginning to be closed the majority of these are open now as i said before there are several ways of starting a round mail uh, round mail is the type of weave we're using there are again many variations there's where you can just drop beads or jump rings into it uh, or you can add beads like we're going to here uh, you can even do turkish round mail which is where you do a mix of byzantine and round mail you can have round mail where there's nothing in it at all it's just a really pretty weave so you know it is just one of those and again there are lots and lots of different ways of starting it I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest. So my little pile there, and what I want to do is just take a scrap of wire. Now, you literally uh, only need the tiniest little bit of 0.5 wire or um, even like a food bag tie, you know, just something that you can, that will hold its shape and hold three jump rings for you. So I'm going to just show you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this so at the very beginning it's going to look a little bit jumbly you know you need to get those beads in to get it started to get it stable now you see here this is the only time we just need it just for the very very beginning part so i'm going to take my wire and i'm going to add on my three closed jump rings one two and three Okay, and what I'm going to do is bring this wire nice and close and twisted together. Because what I want to do is take these three jump rings here and place them to look like a little flower. So I'm just going to open them out slightly. So they're going to sit like this. Now they're not going to go perfect for that first one. And that's absolutely fine. Don't worry too much about it. This is just the beginning part. And once you've got it stable, you can kind of play about with it anyway. We have one, two, three. What? Bye, Esther. It was lovely to see you. Hopefully see you again. Um, I was just looking for a pin. I've got a whole pot of them right in front of me. There they are. So what we want to do I start off using a lanyard it's very handy if you drop it oh absolutely yeah i can imagine <laughs> um you know i think there's so everybody gets so inventive with the way that you start off um with this we just want something that we can actually twist our wires into the um our, our jump rings into this formation of three so can you see that we've got this here now what i want to do i'm just going to bring this down to here my arm likes to go up a little bit so we'll just see how he works now okay so we're going to add three jump rings now what we're going to do is we're going to add a jump ring through this these two here and then these two here and then these two here okay we're going to connect them into a little triangle so we want it to try and stay like this like a little flower so it's going to go like this okay so just again just to reiterate because you'll lose it once i put the jump rings in we're going to connect these two these two and these two so this is where prep works i'm going to take an open jump ring and i'm just going to come through and i'm going to gently let that go coming in with my other pliers and closing that up nice and properly now you notice i sort of would give it a little wiggle to make sure it's nice and aligned i tend to put my pliers down i still because i'm right hand dominant i don't know i tend to always keep control with my right hand and then come back up like this and see how it's laid back down now i haven't lost control <laughs> yet 
taking another jump ring and now I want to do the same on these two so again I'm coming up and I'm just collecting those two jump rings just there I can let it go very carefully and I can close that jump ring and come back come back and you notice when I come back I'm actually pushing that that jump ring that's dropped there I'm pushing that back up so I can see the layout now I'm not losing that layout so if I just gently put my finger in the middle you can start to see what looks like a two-layered flower almost so I can see I've got two on the outside there and you can almost see it almost shows you where that third one has to go so it's got to go to this one here and I can move that and it's connected to the wire so I know that's the right one and this one here so coming through and collect those two and close now if I drop it down like this please be right you'll see fingers crossed we should have another layer of three unless I put it through the wrong jump rings which I may have done this is where the first part does look a little bit jumbly so you've got your three on the outside there so I've got that one that one that one I may have put you in the wrong place if you think you've put one in the wrong place just take it off drop it back down if you drop it down like this it should show you the connection point can you see when i dropped it down it shows me that those two there aren't connected so if you do it wrong don't worry just undo it quickly and now i can put it through i think i had it the right way i just put it in the wrong angle There we go, come on. There we are. Don't do what I was about to do and use your fingers to close it. Okay, that's better. So it is always the hardest part. You're absolutely right. Um, are you putting the new jump rings laid over or under each other? So all they did, they've just connected, um, Debbie. So if I hold it like this, the first three that are connected to the flower or to the wire have now been connected those two those two and then those two <laughs> it takes the longest so you figure out 100 percent um but what i noticed when i placed it down do you see it didn't lay right can you see now i've laid it i've repositioned it see when i hold it out it's laying right i've got that those three on the outside again and hopefully again you can see their connection points i'll hold it here for you and i'll go through with a wire a pin so you can see these are the first three it connected those two together there then it connected those two together there these are still just the initial three and then it connected those two together there okay so hopefully that's going to make sense you just need to put a jump ring through that one, if you think of the corner connecting that one to that one, jump ring. That one and that one, jump ring. That one and that one, jump ring. I use wire with jump rings as it helps when trying to see if you have it right. Yeah, so I've got the jump, I have got it connected with wire just here. Um, and then as I, yeah, so I can drop that down and I can see if that's right or not. Um, once you've got that in position there, when I hold it like that, you can see you've got that little triangle. That's the trickiest part. That is the trickiest part done, okay? Now it's just a matter of, we want to do another row. So again, taking your jump rings, I'm gonna do the same again. So I'm gonna connect this one to this one. Now, now I'm working on the three that are on the outside, the row I've just added. So collect. And collect I let it go and as I said I like to put it back then I can see if I'm doing it right 
or you can drop it down like this now. Once you put the beads in, it becomes way easier. See those two there? It's almost telling you now they need a jump ring. So collect, connect and connect and close. Drop it back upside down. See there we've got those two. If I see I've got two loose jump rings and when you do that, you can see that gap that hasn't got the jump rings. So you know that that is where those that next jump ring goes. Now it's just exactly the same repeat. Connect, connect, connect. If I hold it down like this, you'll see. Connect, connect, connect. What I want to do is put my jump ring, I want to put my beads into this now, otherwise I won't be able to get them in. So I'm going to open it out, push my beads through. And when I do this, can you see now how it's going to come down and around the beads and it will make life so much easier. So what you can do is take another open jump ring. Oopsie. Those three that I had at the beginning, I'm going to just kind of collect them with my jump ring. Let's see if I can collect this at the same time. <laughs> or, in fact, what I'm going to do is take another piece of wire. Collect that end part with the, collect that little loop. And then when you open this out like this, you'll be able to just feed the wire straight down. We can tie it up at the end. Because it's only getting started that we want to get this into place. Just opening that out. At the moment, it just looks like a jumble, and that's fine. It will. We'll sort that out in a moment. But what you can do is twist this. Remember, this will be cut. Twist those bits together. Now you've got that coming down over your beads. So I fed that. I literally put a piece of wire through the end of the uh, tiger tail. And just brought that up and just twisted it with that start wire. Now that's just got that out of the way. It's got my wire, my jump rings in place. And now it becomes a lot easier. So now I can just go through those two. And close. Turn it around. And this is all you're going to do now is nice and repetitive. Is simply going over those two. Make sure you close them properly. And down. If it kind of tries to fold up, just push it down gently. Okay. And then those two just there. Close. And then when you bring that down like that, they're going to sit down. The, the rotation becomes the same, okay? So we're just going to come across and close. Come across and close. And then around and close. And that is all it is. So the trickiest part really is just getting that started piece. Um, and even then, it's only because there's nothing in it to stabilize it. So you can't clearly see what where your um, jump rings are, if that makes sense. Can we see how it's now starting to come down? And you just keep doing that same pattern. So again, having those jump rings, 
you'll see now why it really is so important oopsie to have them open and ready to go just going around in twos and then round again It looks so much easier with the beads there. I'm going to give this a go. It really is easy. Um, it really is just that initial getting started. So, um, you know, once you've got it started and you get those beads in, um, <clears throat> it makes it so much easier for you. It's just a matter of getting that first part. You just need to be patient and not panic, which really is the key thing because the pattern itself is so easy. And if you think of what we're doing now, this rotation of just joining side to side is all we did on that first section. This is all we did on that first section. So it just wasn't as clear because we obviously had no beads in the middle. But all we're doing now is what we were doing at the very, very beginning. OK. So you just keep going down like that. Now, obviously, I need to be able to try and get out my um, to connect this. What I'm going to do is very carefully snip that wire. Because what I can do now, now I've got that in place, is take a new jump ring. and Just kind of connect through that with a jump ring. You can just kind of collect everything that was held in with the wire. You can collect through with a jump ring now. And then you can remove that wire carefully. I say carefully. Just I'm, I'm, It's only because it's me that does that. And where you've got that there, hold it all nice and steady. And then just take another jump ring and collect it together. So you're just holding it together with a jump ring there. And double it up with a jump ring there. So all we've done at the end there was just collected those loose jump rings. You hold it up here. So you can see that my loop is now attached to a jump ring. And then when I removed that wire, I was able to just quickly scoop them all up with jump rings. It's going to give you that finish there. But this is what I meant about how you can, you don't necessarily, you need to just shorten your beaded section very slightly to allow for that section there, um, which is obviously going to have just no beads in it, just where you're getting started. So... I'm just going to do a couple more rotations for you. And then we'll just, so again, collect those two. Let's see if I can get this to go a bit closer. Come on, camera. It's got like a spring in it, so it only goes to a certain height. So going along. Lucy Rose Gold is out of stock now. Oh, the rose gold is beautiful. I mean, they're all beautiful. Um, and what I love about this one is that I love about the fact is that you've got that color color contrast. So you can see those beads inside, you know, making a feature of it. Going across. But that is all you're going to keep doing. Um, I would say if you're prepping, that you want to prep so that you've got about um you probably if you're going to prep prep so you've got about a bag and a half of jump rings open to be honest with you um this is a piece that i was practicing on and this is one bag so you can see here that that one bag did just i mean depends on the size of your bracelet over your wrist as well uh, but that one bag probably just about just needed a couple more inches of chain mail so it does a whole, it does a lot. Um, and you see on this one here, if you wanted to do like a section 
um, like say on a necklace, like just a section there, what you can do is pop a jump ring around and collect all of them. And then you have like a stopper. So you see on there, I've just taken a round jump ring and just collected the end of all of the chains. That gives you like a stopper. So if you wanted to have um, like a section, you would be able to do it like that as well. OK, um, so that's just sort of to give you a guide. So we'll just do a little bit more. But yeah, if you're opening these up in advance, I would say go for um, go for about a bag and a half. And then that way you can just sit down. And honestly, it's so therapeutic when you sit down and you put a bit of TV on. I like to put a bit of a, what I call rubbish TV, a bit of YouTube or, you know, find a, a film or something. And you can just sit down. And once you've got everything ready to go, it just builds so nicely. And you can see it's just the same thing. And once you've got it established, you really, it's a really difficult one to go wrong on. <laughs> um, and this is me being, because I am that person that can go wrong all the time. This really is a nice, easy um, sort of weave to sort of start with, especially if you want that beaded look as well. Joanne, I'm having a little practice with some jump rings I have. I so have to get some of these kits. Honestly, you do. And I have to just say, as a side note, I've said this to Kitty um, herself, it totally beads themselves. Their jump rings are a beautiful quality. They're a really love. Can you see how they're really strong? So these are a one mil base wire. So jump rings are done when we talk chain mail, we talk about inner diameter, we talk about uh, the gauge of them. So generally, unless stated otherwise, um, and I know that Totally Beads do have some smaller jump rings that are a finer gauge and they're stated. They tend to generally be a one mil gauge, but these are like a really, they're lovely and strong. So there's no fear of these coming undone you know, like opening up or widening out, um, which makes it really, gives you a really great peace of mind as well. So I'll just do a few more and then we'll just show you how we finish. So I'll undo all my hard work down here um, and I'll just show you how we can finish this off. So you can see literally, <laughs> imagine doing this in a full mill. Uh, I can actually show you. It can be done in a formula, actually. Um, but yeah, but with the beads secured, obviously. Um, let me just see if I can just, I had a piece. There it is. So I was playing about with different sizes. Um, just to show you. Good job you said this, actually, Lucy, because it's um, helpful for me. So I'm just going to put this comment up. Imagine doing this in a formula. Um, no problem, Janet. Good luck with your kits and let me know how you get on. And also, I am on Facebook. Um, I'm Laura Binding. I'm under Unit U by Laura Binding and also Crafty Elevensies. So I'd love for you to share your makes as well. Tag me in it. I'd love to see how you get on. And obviously, if you get stuck, give me a shout. Um, so this is this in a formula. Um, now, it's, it's that was a really good comment. Um, oh, sorry. It's uh, shown automatically. Um, see these are so when you're working out your bead size they tend to be need to be about two mil smaller than the size of the actual jump rings um so these are four mil as in like a six six mil outer four mil inner and i had to drop right down to sort of your two mil beads but i love the look of this it really is lovely in contrast for a lovely delicate let me just put these together side by side so you can see six mil in the diameter, four mil in the diameter. However, with the larger one, you get the uh, fluidity. The bracelet itself obviously moves. Flexibility. The smaller one is quite rigid. So it's, it's great maybe as like a little section and a necklace. I think that would look really pretty. But... Um, you wouldn't really get a very good bracelet. I was actually hoping for earrings. Um, so, yeah, if you have a little. Oh, thank you, Lucy. That's really sweet of you. Um, yeah, it is more feminine. I completely agree. It's just so it would have a bit of give for a bracelet, but you would have to be 
can you see it's quite structured because of the uh, four mil so it does look beautiful I personally like the idea of having this just in a little like almost like a bar section of a necklace so that would be your front part of a necklace and then maybe two and two for the rest of it I think that would look really pretty so yeah it definitely is something that you can work with but when you do chain mail there will always be pros and cons to what size you use and to why you use the sizes that you do um, and so for, for this one the restriction is that that fluidity you don't have as much um, flexibility that you do with the uh, larger size you can see that it's much more flexible um has anyone got any questions so far um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut this and make this a bit smaller just so I can very quickly show you how I finish it I'm going to just cut it to here. So, uh, love it in the smaller size, more feminine. Rose gold is back in stock, people. I'm going to just have to uh, show that one. Rose gold is back in stock. So, Kitty has worked her magic. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, Rose gold is back in stock. It looks so good and I have ordered three different colours. Oh, thank you, David. Well, I'd love to see your makes, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, I see that, Joanne. I'll put that up at you so that you can see um, what we're saying next to each other. The smaller four mil one looks more feminine. The six mil looks more masculine. I mean, I think it depends in the colourway as well. Um, maybe the black and the black you would give a more sort of masculine look. And then obviously having the... Um, the rose gold <laughs> which i have put on my desk of doom and somehow managed to literally oh there it is you know i i get what you're saying about the masculine and the, and the feminine kind of look but again i think if you've got it in the right colorway as well it's got a lovely look i mean this would look lovely if you maybe um you could mix it right up if you want to get sort of a little bit clever and have it graded down so you have the flexible bit at the front of a necklace or even a bracelet so you could graduate it down so yeah absolutely tons and tons you could do what thickness for the jump rings they are a one mil thick let me just put this here um where did it go the gym the jump rings are a one mil jump ring what one mil gauge or a if you are um use an american gauge they are an 18 mil. Um, is there an, I'm just going to put some questions up. Is there a name to this we thanks in advance? Yes, it's called the captured inverted round mail. Captured inverted round mail um, or the CIR. Um, and it's just a variation on the round mail. We round mail, as I mentioned earlier, is, is very widely used. Um, you can capture gem, jump rings with it. Um, sorry, you can use it to capture your beads you can use it to capture jump rings uh it's a really great fun weave it's also great on its own so i'm just looking in my little box of magic to see if i can find anything um but yes so that's what it's called um pink pearls and rose gold goes on men and women absolutely ruth completely agree his and hers matching pairs amazing no problem thank you uh david for joining me um so i will very quickly just take this off and just show you super quickly how you would finish it but it's pretty much the same as um you start really uh let me just bring this back down to here i'm not going to add a cover on just for easiness just get this done on here just because I'd like you to be able to finish the whole piece. If you're getting these amazing kits, you want to know how to, to get them finished. This will be a little key ring. Okay, so let me just cut that end off there. So you can see here that I've more or less covered it. So I would just do one or two more now to collect. So I'm coming over towards the end. This obviously could be on your bracelet or a key ring if you want to do it just as a bag charm or key ring. Collect. Collect. And one more. 
over here. Okay, so when you get to the point here, you can see it's kind of at that point. I want to collect the end of the uh, bead and thread. I don't want to miss that. So what I'm going to do is collect one of the outside jump rings and I'm just going to go through that bead and thread. I'm going to go through the bead and thread first because it wasn't going to go on and then collect the jump ring. I might need to go one more row actually very quickly. It was just a little bit too close to it. Yeah, I'm going to go one more. So we've got that one there. See, the moment you take the beads out, you lose that um, stability. To be honest with you, it isn't going to go anywhere. So if you're not able to collect that final little bit of bead in thread, it really isn't going to be the end of the world. But if you can, you can see here that I've gone through it. Take one of the loose ones, collect it if you can. Oh, we're all being friends there. Open it out. And then just collect one of those loose ones. And I just tend to collect two of the loose ones. So bead and thread looped, two of the loose ones. You can even get that last one on if you can. And then you just collect any loose jump rings and you do it like that. So see when it's like that, there's some loose jump rings. So you just take another open jump ring and just collect any loose ones. You can tidy this up, there you go. And that is all of your jump rings collected, either end, and there's your little section obviously that would be a bracelet you could add on your um clasp as well um oh um okay uh do you i'll just pop this one up do you need to have more rows at the beginning and at the end no what you should find diane is that do you see that it kind of balances itself out it'll balance can you see like i didn't plan that but that's kind of balanced out so basically you, when you get to the end do one more row so you have like a loose row with no beads in it then when you collect your beads it your rings it all kind of just comes together can you see so you'll find that it kind of naturally joins where it should then you pop on your clasp and then that's pretty much it. You just want to make sure you don't have any loose jump rings that are dropped down, that you've collected all your jump rings and you can either double them up or keep it single. Um, just do the same on both sides. So if you are going to double it up, um, just to say as well on the bracelet, when you're doing the bracelet, you do need to have single jump rings to be able to pop the clasp uh, findings onto. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So um, are there any questions? I'm going to switch back over to this version now. Do we have any questions? Um, hopefully that made sense. I would say, obviously, go back and watch the recording where you'll be able to do it in your own time and stop and pause it. Um, but yeah, hopefully that should be it. Just take your time at the very beginning. Just those first couple of rows, just as soon as you've got those, those two rows done, it all clicks and it'll all come together. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I will be back on, when am I back? I know when I'm back. I'm back in a couple of weeks, <laughs> the 21st, Wednesday the 21st. We'll be back on Wednesday the 21st and we'll be doing the Euro 4-in-1. Go and check out the website. Um, don't forget to go and check out all these lovely kits that we've got put together for you. It's the Cora Beaded Chainmail and it's in the Facebook tutorial video section of the web page um so yeah back in two weeks and uh yeah okay uh i'm gonna leave it at that thank you everybody and um, i'll hopefully see you in a couple of weeks okay bye <laughs>